general public has a right to know what goes on inside laboratories like UCLA as well as many other uh, research facilities across the country. This event is a part of World Laboratory Animal Liberation Week and there are protests and news conferences going on in over 30 cities across the United States. World uh, Laboratory Animal Week was uh, uh, created uh, actually by In Defense of Animals it's probably about 20 years ago now. And uh, it was done so that uh, the general public, the media, would not forget what was going on behind the locked doors of our nation's laboratories. Uh, when I hear about the uh, animal research, and I hear researchers using that phrase and saying how, just how humane it is, to me, what I, what I hear is as a veterinarian, I hear that animal torture, animal mutilation, the burning, the blinding, the addicting, the infecting, breaking of backs, uh, drilling of holes into brains, I hear that as humane. And there's no way that is humane uh, uh, when it is done to uh, uh, innocent, uh, gentle beings that are being held captive in these uh, uh, isolated cages. It's just cruel and inhumane. Morally, it's, uh, it's wrong. Research wanted here. Animal research really doesn't further medical gain. What's your response to that? Um, that's sort of hard to respond to because it's patently untrue. Uh, there are almost no advancements in medical technology that take place without animal research. Uh, they also say it's, you know, a dog is a being just as we are a human being and life should be valued. Uh, is it appropriate to, and they say that animals suffer. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts on that, uh, well, I can tell you a story, which is that a lot of the uh, veterinary staff that work here have actually left their veterinary positions at actual vets because they feel that the standard of care here is higher. Uh, so I, I, I don't really understand that point of view at all. And then finally, your thoughts on, you know, we see growing acts of violence and vandalism against researchers and such. Uh, good or bad, it's inappropriate. What do you think? Um, I think it's totally legitimate to be against animal research, and that's a fine opinion to have. However, to take it to a criminal activity is totally unacceptable. And what's the, finally, what's the last thing you want to, to, to uh, the main objective is just to, to sustain or grow animal research? What, what do you think? Uh, we want to sustain our current work. We still think that it needs to be grown. Uh, this kind of work is necessary if people want medical advancements. If they don't want that, then we don't have to be here. So all these tests are completely valid. You disagree. Hello? Certainly. The people that uh, make statements yes. like that are typically the ones that are receiving six-figure salaries for the performance of animal experimentation. Who's this? They're simply trying to defend their paychecks, and many people will be just as dishonest as necessary to do that. The bottom line is that non-human primates are very different from human beings, and so unless we're trying to find cures for diseases in rhesus monkeys, all of this money is being wasted. There have been 80 vaccines that were for AIDS that were developed from primate research. Not a single one of them has worked on human beings. Proponents of animal research often claim that many of the medical advancements we enjoy today couldn't have been achieved without the use of animals. I believe this is false. There are a lot of misleading conclusions that have been made due to extrapolating results from animal research to human beings. One example of this is the drug thalidomide. It was tested extensively on animals and deemed safe. However, when it was introduced on the human market, it caused disastrous birth defects. There are many examples of drugs like thalidomide which have caused harm to humans and had to be pulled from the market. The tobacco industry also used animal experiments in its favor, which prolonged people suffering from the effects of smoking. They were able to do this because experiments done on rats forced to inhale smoke showed the rats did not develop lung cancer. These results were then extrapolated to humans. But of course we know today that smoking does cause cancer in humans. This is an example of how animal experiments actually harmed human health. Furthermore, the money that's poured into animal research could be much more effectively used in educating people how to prevent the majority of diseases which afflict us. And the majority of diseases are preventable through adhering to a whole foods, plant-based diet 
having healthy amounts of exercise, and living a healthy lifestyle. Vaccine. Animal research. Antibiotics. Animal research. Kidney transplant. Animal research. Penicillin. Animal research. Anesthetics. Animal research. Insulin. Animal research. Vaccines. Animal research. Standing up. Standing Animal. out. Medical Animal research. We will shout. We also want people to know that there are alternatives to the use of animals for nearly everything that's done in laboratories today. Uh, it's unethical and inhumane to kill animals in laboratories, and especially when there are so many good ways of finding out this information that don't involve harming any other beings. A few of the organizers of UCLA protests are going to make a very brief statement. Uh, first will be David Yench, a professor here who was one of the principal organizers of UCLA protests. He'll be followed by Tom Holder, who's one of the founders of Protest UK and he's here from the UK to help organize uh, this rally. They'll be, make a brief statement and then uh, proceed with the rally up to the Court of Sciences. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm David Yench. I'm one of the founders of UCLA Protest. Um, I basically decided to found this organization um, when after the morning of March the 7th, Unknown people came into my yard in the middle of the night and set my car on fire and burned it to the ground. And they, they managed to successfully destroy my car this morning, but as you can see, they actually ended up creating something else in the process. They created the rally um, that's here today. They came and they attacked me, um, but I was a proxy. I was a proxy for attack on this entire institution this institution that's committed itself to being one of the premier institutions of bi for biomedical research in the country. Okay. And the people that are surrounding you right now are all the people that work tirelessly every day to make discoveries about human biology and medicine. And um, they're just not going to take this level of harassment anymore. And they're here with me today to show um, the strength and intelligence of the people that are involved in this effort. And we're also going to show you our faces and we're going to show you the goodness of our side and our perspective. That's what we're here for today and um, we hope you will join us in the Court of Sciences for the rally. Full name spelling? Jensch. My last name is Jensch. J-E-N-T-S-C-H. J-E-N-T-S-C-H. Jensch. Do you feel you've taken a risk today by going public and having your face so recognized? I think the only risk is silence. I'm going to let Tom. So my name's Tom Holder. Um, I flew over from Britain a few days ago. And I was involved in the original protest rally in the UK in Oxford. I think today is going to be remembered as the day that scientists stood up and said no more. No more to the burning of cars. No more to the flooding of houses. No more to the fear and harassment of the researchers that do life-saving research at UCLA and beyond. Three years ago, students, scientists and members of the public in Oxford in the UK stood up to animal rights extremism. It had got bad, worse than it had been here. We had seen grave robbings by animal rights activists. We had seen bombs in colleges and all students deemed legitimate targets. The fact is, after the years of violence, it was all on one day where the British public came and said, no more. Animal research saves lives and thus we want it to continue. Today we have the same goal. Today we, show, uh, we aim to show the animal rights activists and the animal rights extremists that they cannot scare us into silence. They cannot win through the violence. UCLA protest is standing up to show that when scientists speak up and speak up together, that their voice are louder, their message more powerful, and that they can overcome the misinformation propagated by animal rights groups. Who are they to say that we cannot have antibiotics? Who are they to say that we cannot have the new cancer drugs of the future? or that medicine should grind to a halt because a minority disagrees with this process. I believe today is going to mark a turning point in the US on the animal research issue and I'm so glad to see so many people here support us in our cause. Thank you. What's your name with you? My name is Tom Holder. I am one of the members of UCLA Protest. I'm the spokesman of Protest in the UK 
And I've also got my own group in the US called Speaking of Research. Did the group make a difference in the UK? The group has made a huge difference. We have seen violence gone from the point of grave robbings and bombings to almost zero incidents. We're talking like one-handed digits on the number of incidents in a year now from the hundreds that were before. Protest has not been the only organisation, but they have been one who have contributed into allowing scientists to have the confidence to speak up. And when they have the confidence, the true facts about animal research can come out. And when they come out, I believe the public will join our cause. There are many humane alternatives which are effective and reliable. Those include tissue culture studies, epidemiological studies, in vitro studies, and computer modeling techniques. I think it's very, very important that there be a dialogue. We really believe that when there is a dialogue between the two of us, that we win, that we don't lose. Um, we've actually been asking them to come out here for a very, very long time. The problem is that people who see this as a social injustice, we don't have a lot of money. Uh, there, are, there are billions and billions of dollars in animal research. They have the ability to go to the media and, and set the message for the entire country. Uh, we don't have that. Uh, all we have is people who feel uh, emotionally about this, who come out and try and get it into the newspapers, get the media to come out. They have billions and billions of dollars, and they have actually created the concept that what they are doing is essential and important. And I think that that's, uh, that's evil. That I, I can't overcome that power. But I know that absolute power corrupts absolutely, and that's the situation here. They, they have sold the American people on the fact that this animal research is necessary.